was about nine years old, in 2004, I took an interest in the Cartoon Network TV show called Courage the Cowardly Dog. I had managed to find the time to watch every single episode, at least twice, so I had a complete understanding of what the show its amusingly eerie nature. However, as I got older, my fascination with the show gradually whined as I began to go through high school, getting a job and such. It was only until about a month ago that I remember the show, but I got to see something I probably wasn't supposed to. One day I was roaming at a thrift store and after being dragged there by my mom, I was browsing the crap on the shelves and I saw a stack of DVDs. One of them I noticed was the third season of Courage. It was my favorite season so naturally I picked it up and for the measly price of three dollars. When I got back home, I stuck it into my computer and immediately hit play all. When the menu came up, I skipped some of the episodes I used to watch rather frequently because everything was normal until I hit the 10th double episode. If you don't know what those shows, that has two episodes about 12 minutes long. The first two was called Fishy Business, into which is the family is tired and tried by a court by a marine animals that deemed to be uncivilized. In the beginning of the episode, Courage is trying to teach a little red fish with the orange fins and big purple eyes to jump through a roof. Poop. Stupid, I know. Muriel walks in with a tray of sushi she had made at one point. Courage reaches for the piece, which causes the fish to recoil in shock. When the fish antagonist of the episode takes the family to underwater courtroom, something happens I always thought it was weird. The little fish jumps out of the bowl, lands on the tray of sushi, cautiously looking around. After the coast is clear, the fish puts on a manacle expression while using a pair of chopsticks to eat the sushi. I always thought this part was a little too creepy to be a thing to put on a kid's show. I mean, they just showed a fish cannibalizing its own kind and apparently enjoying the hell out of it. Normally, it goes to the next scene after he takes the first bite, on, but in this version, he continues to eat the flesh, displaying the same level of this psychotic bliss and when he began. He finished the entire tray in about a minute and then turned to look at the camera for about 10 seconds with a lunatic expression. After 10 seconds of exchanging glances with the insane creature, the creature then cuts to static for a full minute before it abruptly cuts back to the episode with the family sentenced to live in a bowl. The screen was a little staticky, but it wasn't enough to significantly blur the image beside that the episode played out normally afterwards. At the end of every episode, there is one final shot of the fish where he bursts into demonic laughter. At the very end of the episode, there is one final shot where the fish, before he bursts into demented laughter. That's normal, but I know the detailed eyes weren't. After that, the scene then cut to the static again, this time lasting about six minutes. During that time, I tried to comprehend what I just saw. It wasn't straightforward up terrifying, but it definitely left me unsettled. Why did it show it to me what it did? Why did that fish look at me? What does that all mean? My thoughts were cut short to my surprise. The video clip began as I was getting more freaked out at this point, and I considered turning off the computer altogether, but I decided to watch it. I mean, who knows? It might clear something up. The video was set to night, seemingly captured on a phone camera with a dim light coming from, from what I presumed to be a flashlight what the camera person was carrying. They kept it pointed forwards, but I couldn't make out the trees in the darkness as I walk along the trail. They continued on this path for about five minutes, until they stopped in front of what appeared to be a pond and lowered the camera down to the surface of the water. I could still see small fishes swimming around near the edge of the pond, and that's where a small redfish with orange fins swam up to the frame. Just when it reached to the center of the screen, the video cut to black and ended. The episode next began, but not the second one, but this next double episode. At this point, I was legitimately frightened by the video. I was obviously related to what I saw, but wasn't raising any more questions. Instead of giving me any kind of answer, I removed the DVD from the computer and went straight to bed after that. About a week after that night, I went with some friends to a park just before I could go to work. 
We were hanging around the pond as I looked at the clear surface of the water. My stomach turned as I saw little fish with orange fins swim up to the surface. It stopped and looked at me and somehow began to curl its mouth into a twisted grin. Just before it did, I ran from the edge of the park back to my friends, whom I didn't speak a goddamn word about what I saw when they asked me what was wrong. I smashed the DVD with a hammer once I got home. Well, my pretties, that was Courage the Cowardly Dog, the Cannibal Fish, a Courage the Cowardly Dog Cree Pasta. My final thoughts on this story? Well, it's an alright Cree Pasta, I guess. It's not the best creepy pasta I've seen, but it definitely wasn't really, really terrible or anything like that at all. Like, I mean, it's not the best Cree Pasta I have seen, but I definitely have to say right now that it was okay. I mean, not the best story, but it definitely wasn't terrible. I could definitely say that right now that, you know, this story definitely has a lot of great time and effort. Although, I mean, I do like the story and it does have like an interesting concept in that. And it seemed really good. But... <sighs> I do have a thing about this story, and I'm going to be brutally honest with it. So, yeah, I'm just definitely going to say right now that this is a, actually a pretty interesting creepypasta. Like, I mean, I'm going to be honest when I say this. This is honestly, I mean, it's a good story. I personally like this. It's a pretty interesting story, but... It is actually a really awesome some concept, but here's the thing. Now, I mean, I liked it back when Creepsman Pasta narrated it back in 2014. And unfortunately, as of now, that video, the original video he uploaded is, I think it got a copyright claim and it got blocked worldwide, which kind of sucks because I wanted to see it. So, yeah, I mean, that was like a long, long time ago, but, you know. There's some people re-uploading his narration of the story, which is awesome. So I thought maybe I should give this one a go. This one is just maybe be I'm looking at this differently, but the ending was not that great. I definitely have to say it's pretty much cliched in my honest opinion. But I mean, while it did look pretty interesting and it did have a good concept and stuff, and it seemed pretty neat, but... If I'm going to be honest, the ending just wasn't that good. And that is just me being brutally honest with this. This story, while it does have like a really interesting concept, I personally really enjoyed it. But the end, but it was but it's not my cup of tea. I mean, the story was is okay. Maybe not the best um Courage Carly Dog Cree pasta, but I definitely found a somewhat enjoyable but the ending of it was not that great because it just ended like how with most lost episode pastas do and there were a few cliches in this story but i didn't think this story didn't find the story to be bad it's an all right story could have been better though but it's still an okay story i really wish it could have been a bit better but that's just me i personally didn't think this story was all that bad could have been better, though, I could definitely say. It could have been better, but it's definitely not the worst. But, I mean, the ending of it was just not that great, either, because, you know, it's kind of like how, um, like, most Lost Episode Pastas do. But that, you know, with people, you know, destroying the disc or whatever with the movie or Lost Episode, I personally feel that that could have been left out. But it's kind of hard to make a good Lost Episode Pasta without repeating the same thing and this is an older pasta so i'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt that this is like an older pasta so i'm willing to say that there's definitely that but anyways uh with that being said and that being the case i personally really thought this was an enjoyable story i mean it's not my cup of tea but i still thought it was enjoyable so i guess with that being the case and with that being said 
I'm going to sit here and say right now that this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepy pastas. This is just simply my own personal thoughts. I'm going to give this story a 7 out of 10. Mainly a 7 out of 10 because while the story was pretty interesting, maybe not the best pasta in the world, but it definitely was an interesting concept. But the ending was just not that great. It just, it just ended like pretty much how most lost episode pastas do. But I will give it benefit of the doubt that this is an older pasta. And the grammar of it was pretty decent. Maybe not perfect, but it definitely was decent. So I was able to read. I also can re can definitely say I remember Krupsman Pasta narrated this story. So this one does give me a bit of memories. But yeah, I'm really glad that, you know, someone has managed to archive Krupsman Pasta's narration of it and upload it to their channel because his original narration got blocked worldwide for some reason, which kind of sucks, but still. So, I mean... The story is not my cup of tea, but it definitely wasn't terrible. Not perfect, but not a terrible story either. So I will give it that. Anyways, what did you guys personally think of this um, creepypasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what you have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when it uploads. That way, you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Um, if you are interested in following my DeviantArt page as well as my um, Twitter account, you are more than welcome to go follow those. Links to those will be in the About page section of my channel. Also, if you're interested in subscribing to my backup channel known as Miss Dark Shigo, Link to that will be in the about page section of my channel, so you guys can go check that out if you want. And as always, please roll the outro, because I'm out of here, and I'll catch you all in the next upload. Peace out.